So today we're going to begin chapter 4. And in this chapter we're going to be looking at the structure of the atom and the layout of how electrons are stored. And as we go throughout the periodic table, you'll see that there is a distinct relationship between where an element is on the periodic table and its configuration of electrons. Consider our old friend carbon, and we know, according to the atomic number, that carbon has six protons, and that's here. So we know that it has six protons. We're going to abbreviate those P plus, and that has six. We also know that if it is a neutral atom, that means one with no charge, that it has to have the same number of electrons. In this case, also six. We're going to abbreviate electrons E negative. The number of electrons changes, obviously. You'll notice that they go in order. And so if we were looking at carbon, we know it has six. We know nitrogen has seven and gin has eight, and so on and so forth. It's where they're put around the nucleus that determines two things. One, its location on the periodic table and reacts, what you might recall from all the way back in chapter one as what we defined as chemical properties. And where we put them is what's defined as quantum numbers. Now when we discuss the term quantum numbers, this term quantum derives its origins from this term where it says quanta are described as discrete packets of energy because it requires a certain amount of energy, not just any amount that is continuous, to excite electrons from one state to another. Same thing goes for energy that is released by an atom when an electron goes from a higher energy state to a lower energy state. It, dis it yields a discrete value of energy. So we can say that the energy of electrons is quantized. And the way that works is that uh, electrons don't have energy that is a straight continuous curve. They have energy in distinct levels like flights of stairs. There's nothing in between. Uh, this has been observed by nuclear physicists for a while. Uh, if you're interested in such names, there's a scientist whose name is Planck. It's not Planck, but Planck. And he is uh, one of the one of the uh, first proponents of quantum theory. And he looks like this handsome dude. But we're not going to worry about him if you're more interested in focusing on Planck and Planck's quantum theory. Take AP chemistry. Let's get to the basics. The first basic proponent of quantum theory one, electrons can be found only at discrete energy levels. You may recall that a nucleus. It looks like this. And of course, it contains protons, which we know are positively charged, and neutrons, which are neutral. Well, electrons, being negatively charged, have an electrostatic attraction because opposites attract, if you will recall this from previous science classes you might have had. And that means that they're always in a state of being attracted to the nucleus. That's what keeps them orbiting as we will as we'll say even though the word orbit is not exactly what they do they're also moving at extremely high speed and so that keeps electrons moving around the nucleus uh, in a constant state between the force that's attracting them towards the nucleus and the fact that they're moving really really quickly which throws them away from the nucleus the amount of energy that keeps them from crashing into the nucleus is what we mean by energy levels. And we're going to see as we do this that or electrons don't orbit 
the nucleus at random distances anywhere from the nucleus all the way out to wherever it is they're orbiting. But in fact, they can only orbit the nucleus at distinct levels. We're going to call these levels orbitals. Think of energy levels as floors in a building. We have the first floor, we have the second floor, we have the third floor, fourth, fifth, and so on. And it's not possible to exist between floors. Elevators don't stop on the fourth and a half floor. And so we're going to look at uh, energy levels or orbitals the same way. We have the first energy level, the second, the third, the fourth, and each of these represents a distance from the nucleus. And the farther away from the nucleus you are, the higher your energy is. All right, we're going to represent this with a quantum number that we're going to call a quantum number. We're going to represent it with a lowercase n, and it will be a whole number that can be anywhere from 1, 2, or 3. We're going to stop at 7. And if you've taken a course in quantum mechanics before, you might notice that there's a connection between the number 7, as far as we go in terms of quantum numbers, and the number of rows in the periodic table, but we'll get to that. Electrons occupy particular parts of an energy level. We can think of these as rooms. For example, if you look at the floor plan of a particular floor of a building, you'll see that it's often broken up into rooms like this. Here we can see that the particular uh, floor of a building is broken up into different rooms, and they all have different shapes. So we can say that um, we'll represent this part of quantum numbers in terms of what type of orbital we're in. In other words, what shape of the room are we in? And we're going to call this number the angular momentum quantum number. We're going to represent it with a lowercase l. And for our purposes, l can be any value of n less than 1. So, for example, if we were at energy level n equals 3, the possible values for l could only be equal to anything up to n minus 1. And that means they could only be 0, 1, or 2. If we were talking about energy level n equals 2, our values of L could only be 0 or 1. Okay, so we're talking about our rooms on the floor. And you can rest assured that different rooms have different shapes. And we'll get to that very soon. But let's treat the angular momentum quantum number as though it is what type of room we're in. Okay, so let's put this over here. What type of room? We're going to put that in quotes. We are in. Okay. I'm going to use our next quantum number to describe what direction rooms are pointing. So let's take a look at a floor plan where the rooms are very similar. The floor plan for a hotel. And you'll notice that we've got some rooms that are almost identical. And all the rooms on this side are identical. And all the rooms on this side are identical. But the rooms on this side are different from the rooms on this side in that they're pointing in opposite directions. Here, the bed is on the south side of the building, whereas you know, here, the bed is on the north side of the building. They're identical rooms, but the orientation is different. That's the same with orbitals in an energy level. They can be the same shape, but their orientation will be different. So we're going to represent this with the quantum number that we're going to call the magnetic. And we're going to represent this with a lowercase m. We're going to call this the orientation quantum number. It describes which direction an orbital is pointing. 
and we can have values for the quantum number lowercase m that can be anywhere from negative l to positive l let's try one of these if we have energy level four let's do three energy level three that means that the values of l can be anywhere from zero up to 2, which is, of course, n minus 1. And of these values for L, we'll call this M sub L, so we don't get it confused with the final quantum number. So, for example, for M sub L, for this value, 0, we can only be 0. For this one, where L is equal to 1, our m sub l could be anywhere from negative 1, 0, to positive 1. And for this value, where l is equal to 2, m sub l could be anywhere from negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, or positive 2. Each of these values for m sub l is a different orientation. So, if l is the type or shape of room, m sub l means that if l is 0, there's only one type of room and there's only one orientation. l being 1 means you've got a different type of room and it has three possible orientations. When l is equal to 2, that's a third type of room and it has five possible orientations. Let's do our last one. We're almost done. Last one. And the final rule that we're going to concern ourselves with is that two electrons can occupy the same orbital only if they are spinning in opposite directions. You might recall from a little further back up here that opposite charges attract. If that's the case, that means that like charges have to repel. And what that means is that electrons are always trying to repel each other. How do you get two electrons to occupy the same orbital? Only if they are spinning in different directions. We're going to call the two types of spin, and keep in mind that these are uh, almost arbitrarily assigned, but we're going to call our two types of spin up spin and down spin. So, our final quantum number is what we're going to call the spin quantum number. And this one's real simple. What this indicates is which direction an electron is spinning. And we're going to represent it with a very simple quantum number. We're going to call this lowercase m, but we're going to represent it with a subscript s. And it only has two values. We'll call these plus one half or minus one half. And that's it. Okay? So we're going to do a quick recap, and then we'll, we'll be done. So our first quantum number is called the principal quantum number. We're going to represent it with a lowercase m, and it represents energy level an electron is on. We're going to think of this like floors in a building, where n can equal a whole number all the way up to 7. We're not going any higher than that. And these represent these levels, first, second, third, fourth. Our second quantum number is what we're going to call the angular momentum quantum number. We're going to represent it with a lowercase l. And for our purposes, it's going to tell us what type of orbital, we can think of an orbital as a room, the electron is in. And for any given value of n, l can be equal to anything up to that value minus 1. So if n equals 2, l could be any value from 0 up to minus 1.
let's do our third quantum number. Our third quantum number, we're going to call this the magnetic quantum number. This is going to be what direction our orbital, what we call our room, is facing. We're going to represent this with a lowercase m sub l. And for this purpose, m sub l can be any value equal to negative l up to positive l. So if we have a value for n equals 2, that means l can be anywhere from 0 to 1. And for these values of l, m sub l for this value of 0 can only be 0. But m sub l for this value of 1 can be negative 1, 0, or positive 1. And the last one is what we're going to call the spin quantum number. We're going to represent this with an m sub s. And this is asking, is our electron spinning up or down? And this one's easy because the only values for m sub s that we can have are positive 1 half. doesn't really matter. We'll call that the upspin or negative one half that'll be our downspin okay and those are the only four quantum numbers that we need all right